The dish I'm preparing today is a take on chicken stuffed with haggis. The two chicken breasts that I'm using have uh, been taken from a uh, carcass which I've purchased previously and used the carcass for another dish. The haggis is Charlie Barley's haggis and I'm going to use the ubiquitous turnip or swede. For some reason I don't know why we only really um, associate it with uh, Burns Night. Uh, so I'm going to like to showcase the swede today. Now the chicken itself and the haggis. I know in previous recipes and in many places you've seen the, the haggis actually been stuffed into the chicken. Uh, my thought process on this has been going on for quite some time. If we look at the chicken breast, regardless if we make a pocket on the chicken and we're stuffing the haggis into it, we're roasting it in the oven, the heat circulating the, the chicken and cooking the chicken before the coir, which is the haggis, is heated up. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to showcase the haggis as the main accompaniment to the haggis, to the chicken, sorry, and cook the chicken to perfection with a nice crisp skin. But first of all, we'll start off with our turnip. To prepare the turnip, you see people cutting it like this for some reason, it's just madness. I'm going to cut through the turnip and then just slice it thinly. even slices then we'll take our knife and just remove the outer skin so what we'll do is I'm going to cut these into even size chunks The traditional way would be to boil it to death, but I just want to give it a bit more TLC. I'm going to actually pop this into the steamer with just a touch of salt. So again, what can this kind of steam up, even though it's domestic, it can cut you out. So you just want to be very careful when we're putting in our veg. And just a big pinch of salt. Lay it on and that will take about 15 to 20 minutes and while that is cooking we'll get on with cooking the chicken. So to fry the chicken again got a nice decent sized frying pan. We want that on smoking hot it's just about to come up to that point. The chicken itself again it was pulled from um, the carcass that we bought and we used the carcass uh, to make other dishes in, in the past uh, and we'll use the drumsticks at some point as well to make another dish which we still have in the freezer but even by the standards of the chicken supremes you buy um, in, the, in the packs of four these are a good size and the value for money is pretty phenomenal really and plus you get the bonus side of the skin so into the pan I know a lot of people are a bit wavy of uh, chicken skin but uh, it's one of the finer things in life so into our pan skin side down Now it's going to take about 2 to 3 minutes to get that lovely golden colour on that skin before we think about turning it over. In the meantime, we will add a couple of turns of salt. So and some black pepper. A lot of people might be looking at that going, oh, he's had the salt just now and he's had the pepper just now. When he turns the chicken over, the pepper's going to burn. Technically, no. I think that smokiness is quite nice with the chicken as well. We'll just have a wee look at the chicken now. Yeah, look at that lovely golden. Okay. 
this apart, this salt on the skin to crisp it up. And my pop this into the oven. These sides of bread probably take about 20 to 25 minutes. So we'll check it at the 15 minute stage just to see it. And that'll go in at about 190 degrees. Now to accompany our chicken, I'm going to do a whiskey sauce today. Uh, it's going to be a lighter version of a whiskey sauce. People think whiskey sauce, they think uh, heavy basement cream. What I've got here, I've made my chicken stock from uh, a pre previous carcass, but I've actually roasted it really, really well. In a pan, first of all, then into the oven. And in the tray, we scrape as much of the residue as possible from, from the tray itself. The final moments of the stock, we add maybe a bay leaf, a uh, thinly sliced carrot, one onion, just for flavour. But that's for the last few minutes. And here we have this intense roast chicken stock into the pan. What's just happening fairly quickly? We get that up to the boil. You can smell the intense roast chicken flavour from it. As that's coming up to the boil, a good 50 ml and some of whiskey, just one of the middle whiskey is fine. To that, just about a quarter of a teaspoon of thyme in there, and we're going to reduce that down by about half. Now to just check on our turnip or sweet. Yeah, another five minutes. And just about there. Well, that's finishing cooking. We'll get on with our haggis. Cook it to whatever the instruction says in the packet. You can do the traditional way of boiling it. You could um, heat it up in the oven, or as I'm going to do today, for speed, it's in the microwave. And I can use that word quite confidently because I'm not going to shy away from using the microwave for convenience as long as. We work with the microwave and have a bit of an understanding on how to use the microwave. So, quick sheet of foam on there. I'll pop that into the microwave following the guidelines. So, as you can see now, we're still rapidly boiling. It's been reduced right down, the flavour's been concentrated, that, that raw whiskey flavour has now been mellowed down. I'm going to have a quick taste just to. That intense chicken, roast chicken flavour is even more intense now. I've got a, it's a touch of thyme in the background there. Now to thicken this, what I've got, I've just taken a tablespoon of corn flour and just let it down with a touch of water. And we will just add that, give it a quick mix. And what I'll do is I'll just gonna thicken it nicely to a sauce consistency. A lot of people would probably throw a bit of butter in there and give it a good whisk to emulsify it, but seeing we're going to tweak the rest of our recipe with some butter, we just wanna have a nice light whiskey sauce. Now I'm gonna strain that, ready for the next stage. So after about 15 minutes with the chicken, you can see we've got some lovely fat here. We're just gonna just glaze the chicken. Again, talking about butter, you see all these chefs throwing butter into the pan. You need when you've got this nice glaze here. So I'll pop that in for the final 10 minutes. So our sneep is now good to go. I'm going to transfer it carefully. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this into the oven for a couple of minutes to get even more moisture out of that. So now the turnip which has been in the oven for a couple of minutes, you can see it's still a bit dry around the edges. To that I'm going to take the good old potato masher and I just want to I'm calling them bashed neeps. I don't want to. I don't want too smooth. I want a bit of texture on this. I want the smoothness, but at the same time, 
I'll put them across the occasional bite. Okay. Now to that, I'm going to add a good knob of butter. Just to enrich it. If you didn't want to use the butter, a nice drizzle of olive oil in there as well. It's quite nice. To that, I'm just going to add a little sprinkle of nutmeg. Just get that going. And see so that butter has just given it a wee bit of body. Um, I'd normally add pepper to this, but seeing our haggis has got a nice bit of spice to it, I just want to showcase the sweet as it is with just a bit of nutmeg. And now to put our dish together. So now the chicken is rested, it's been resting now for about five minutes. A point I want to make about cooking the chicken. I'm sure everyone's heard of the way of putting the knife in through uh, the thickest part of the leg. And if the juice run clear, the chicken is ready. I have always found that method a bit bamboozling because when the juices came out, to me they never did seem clear. And clear in the sense of clarity and, and clear in my mind. If you can invest in one of these, it's fantastic. It's about six pound. You take the chicken to about 76 degrees or above, as long as you have 76 happy days. If not, what I would do is I would take the knife into the thickest part of the chicken leave for about five seconds, then into the back of your hand. And if it pulls away, you'll know it's ready. Okay. Now to plate up our dish, we just want to take our haggis. And I'm not going to start using any rings and things like that, I just want to keep it as simple as possible. And we'll take our fashion heaps. that on there. I don't want to cut the chicken, it's a lovely bit of chicken, lovely crisp skin. I want to serve it as nature wants us to serve it. I will finish this off with our intense roast chicken and whiskey gravy. There we have it, nice and simple. You could save that with a nice bit of uh, more veg if you wanted. Uh, I think that as it is, is actually plenty of the lovely roast chicken, our haggis, and the bash leaves. My take on chicken with haggis. Enjoy.